A bar story brought to you by Thursday. So I have this friend. We go out to karaoke together. He's a really great singer, really well put together, really nice guy, a great catch for any man. He says, I want to introduce you to my sister. All right, I don't normally like being set up on blind meetings and whatever, but I acquiesce because he's pretty cool. So I meet his sister. She could not have been more of a polar opposite to her brother. Where her brother was really put together and nice and kind and respectful, she was just a hump of a girl, just a hump. And normally I don't like to judge on looks and appearances, and yet I couldn't help but notice the striking contrast between the two. I had to think, this is probably a switch at birth kind of thing. But then I thought, maybe personality will make up for it. Maybe she's really giving, maybe she's really cool. So I introduced myself to exchange pleasantries. Hi, I'm Megan, I met your brother at karaoke, it's nice to meet you. This girl looks right at me, doesn't say her name, doesn't say it's nice to meet you. Instead, she says, I don't care about that. I just want to eat your pussy. I was aga aghast. What the hell did I just hear? So I looked at her and I said, excuse me, you heard what I said. I want to eat your pussy, was her reply. Throughout the night, she continues to follow me around the bar like a little puppy. Can I eat your pussy? Can I eat your pussy? Can I eat your pussy? All frickin' night. Somehow this chick gets a hold of my number and she calls me and texts me a total of five times the next day. Luckily, unlike the last crazy chick that got my number, this one got the hint when I didn't return any of her texts or phone calls. So my question for you this week, everyone, is what is the weirdest, rudest, most outlandish thing anyone has done to try to come on to you? On with everyone else's questions. First night wish, Nick. Um, every time I read your username, by the way, I think it says night swish, Nick. You asked if we wanted to live in or leave Wonderland. Those books actually have a bit of an extended history in my family. They were something that we really enjoyed reading and we really enjoyed the movies. I see Wonderland and Alice's journey in it, both in the book Alice in Wonderland and in the book Through the Looking Glass, as her having to face herself and face her naivete, face her misconceptions about things. She's a very simple girl at the beginning of the book. She says herself, why would anyone be interested in a book with no pictures in it? Basically meaning, why would I be interested in something that isn't spoon-fed to me? Whereas by the time she gets through the looking glass and faces herself and, in, and the jabberwock and faces her fears, she's broken down all of her own barriers, pushed her own boundaries, and realized that she doesn't necessarily have all of the answers, but she's not afraid to go out and find them. She's dealt with herself and in so has grown as a person. So I would definitely say that Wonderland being as I see it in this capacity, is something that we all have to go through. We all have to deal with our own demons, our own naivete, our own misconceptions about the world, and grow as people. That being said, those books themselves were social commentaries. The overbearing queen and this very weak, humble king were a comment on Parliament at the time that those books were being written. Also, a lot of the characters, particularly the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, um, were a comment on lead poisoning, which was running rampant throughout the area at the time. So, in a historical context, it's rather accurate as to what's going on. Everybody in there represented a social class, a group of people, or something happening in society. So I actually think those books are a lot deeper than they seem on face value. Mark, you asked about guilty pleasure songs. My guilty pleasure song would be this right here. Oh, the shame! The shame! Oh, yeah. Sophia. You asked about our spiritual past. This is something that is quite extensive for me, one that is quite a long story. I will give you a bit of a Cliff Notes version. I spent a lot of time in religious schools. I went to a religious grade school. I went to a very conservative Catholic college where you had to take uh, 12 credits of theology regardless of your major. One class is three credits, so that's four classes of theology. Um, I was lucky enough to get the really uh, more liberal thinking, more progressive teachers uh, in the faculty who were so awesome and amazing and presented the curriculum in a way that tied in with real world life and the things that we um, encountered in our world as students and as a global uh, community. My search for God has not been an easy one. I am not necessarily agnostic, but I don't necessarily think that people interpret God in the best of ways. People who become very fundamentalist about 
God and religion, regardless of faith, I think are very dangerous. It really doesn't surprise me that people have fought wars for hundreds and thousands of years over God when you consider the oneness that a church or a religious body will bring, that sense of acceptance, that sense of love. For me though, I don't necessarily like organized religion because of the fanaticism, so I keep something like that very personal and very close to me. I have recently been struggling quite a bit with my relationship with God. I do feel very disconnected with God at this point in my life, but I don't think that's God's fault. I think it's more mine. Uh, that being said, if you want to know more, go ahead and PM me or ask a question in the comments. Bob, I love your question. Uh, making documentary films or films in general is actually what I want to do with my life. I would also love to make animated films, both feature length and uh, shorts. I would like to make a documentary about war and the deaths of so many civilians. I would also love to make a documentary about Katrina survivors and what has happened to them in New Orleans since 2005. I am also writing a play on transgendered issues, which I've been writing since 2005, and that's something else that I've really been procrastinating on and is a goal of mine to finish by the time that I'm 30 and have staged and ready to go. So thank you all for being so great about this channel. I really appreciate it, and I will look forward to seeing Friend Friday tomorrow.